Hello, everyone. I'm going to do a brief review of what we have learned in this week's lectures. So in the first week, we're doing a brief introduction of financial mathematics and uh, go through, we go through some basic concepts. So first we introduce the concept of financial derivatives. Financial derivative is a financial instrument depending on other more fundamental variables like stocks and the other underlying assets. There are different places to trade financial derivatives. The two places are exchange traded markets and over the counter markets. So we can skip the details of the two markets here. The purpose of financial derivatives are like in three aspects. The first purpose is to hedge, which means that the holder of the financial derivative want to reduce the risk. The second purpose is to speculate, which means that the holder of the financial derivative want to bet on future trends. The last one is to arbitrage, which means that the holder wants to lock in riskless profits. We mainly introduced three types of financial derivatives in our class. The first is the forward contracts. The second is future contracts. And the last one is options. So what are the differences among those three types of financial derivatives? The forward and future contracts obligate the buyer to buy the asset at some future time at a predetermined price. Of course, it also obligate, they also obligate the seller to sell the underlying asset at some future time at a predetermined price. Options give the buyer the right to buy something or the seller the right to, to sell something at some future time at a predetermined price, but he is not necessarily obligated to do so. He, don't, he doesn't need to do so. So since the or options only give the, give the right for the buyer of the options to do something, the buyer of the options had to pay a premium for having such a right to determine whether he will buy or sell something, sell something at the predetermined price in the future. So the forward and future contracts, they have low value when they are set up, but the options, they have a value. The value is the upfront premium, the, the, the buy of the option paid to the, to the other party. So there are two positions. The long position, which means that the buyer of options or the buyer of the underlying assets in a forward or future contract. The short position, which means the seller of our option or the seller of the underlying assets in a forward or futures contract. We mainly introduced the European options. So there are two types of European options. The European core option, which gives the owner the right to buy something at a future time T at a certain price K. The European put option, which gives the owner the right to sell something at a future time T at a certain price K. Here K is called the strike price, while T is called the expiration date. In contrast to European options, we also have American options. So the difference between European options and American options is that the American co-option gives the owner the right to buy something before a future time. And the American put option gives the owner the right to sell something before a future time. So the holder can do, can, 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 can buy something at any time before T and the holder of the put option can sell the underlying asset at any time before the time capital T. So we also introduced the payoffs of European options. Suppose that the maturity is T, the strike price is K, and the price at maturity is S of T. The payoff for, a long, for the long position in a call is the maximum of S of T minus K and zero. Because the gain for the holder 
of a call option will be the loss of the seller of the call option. The payoff for the short position in a call is the minimum of k minus s of t and zero, which is minus maximum of s of t, t minus k and zero. Similarly, the payoff for the holder, also the, for, for, for the one or for one who is in the long position in a European put option is the maximum of k minus s of t and zero. And the payoff for the seller of a European put option is the minimum of, of s of t minus k and zero. Because the payoff for the holder of options is always non-negative. He has to pay a premium for setting up an option because the only option only gives the right to do something. He can choose not to do so. So we denote the cost of setting up our call option with a strike price K and time T to be C not of K and T. And we denote the cost of setting up a put option with a strike price K at time T to be P not of K and T. That's all the important concepts we introduced in this week's class. Thank you.